Look at this thing, mate. Look at this thing. Straight from the flight of the navigator, man. Man, look at this. Look at this. But hang on, mate. Not just that. This is remarkable. I don't know if it's auto tracking something, and then these come into sight. Oh, mate. Don't no know propulsion. What they are, and then it zooms in really close on one. Look. I Look at that. Explode. Oh, yeah, there it is. So we're going to play a little game, guys. You may have noticed that I unloaded four different UAP clips on you, all taken from the International Space Station. Three of them were lifted from a website that's been talking a lot about these sorts of clips lately. Well, I would say that they had one really successful video associated with it, and then one of them I made myself while lifting the audio from this video. And the one that I made is definitely not a UAP. We absolutely know what these objects are. So the question is, which one of these is the fake one? The one that I created. Stop this video, back it up, and put your guess as to which of these clips, number one, number two, number three, or number four, is the fake one that I created. And then wait till the end of the video to find out if you were right or not. Oh yeah, and put your guess in the comments and no fair waiting till the end of the video for the spoiler. And I'll check in with you in just a moment. Good afternoon and welcome to the latest installment of Alien Month. I hope you guys have been enjoying the content this month. And yeah, for those of you who have been watching my channel for a while, you will know that I actually cover quite a lot of information regarding UFOs that have allegedly been spotted in orbit, some of which have been spotted from the International Space Station. But some of this needs to be taken with a grain of salt as well. Not necessarily because it's all the subject of clever trickery or CGI imagery or anything along those lines. And to be clear, in their latest report, the Pentagon reported that there were dozens of UFOs spotted in orbit or beyond the Kármán line anyway. And so therefore, I think it's very logical for us to look for evidence of UAPs from the permanent or at least semi-permanent platform that's been orbiting our planet for decades now. It makes a great deal of sense to look for evidence of UAPs from the International Space Station. But before we start concluding that UAPs have been spotted, that there's cloaking technology in operation, as was claimed on the YouTube channel of Site. By the way, I like this guy. I think he's very entertaining. I think he's very enthusiastic about what he's doing. But unfortunately, if you're going to report on these sorts of things, you also need to have a good idea of exactly what astronauts see on a regular basis while they're on the International Space Station. And the vast majority of these objects are not UAPs, but rather objects that were launched or dropped or detached from the International Space Station. A lot of people are not aware of just how frequently we launch things from the ISS on purpose. And for these particular clips where cameras are tracking an object object soaring through space, flying away from the station, flying towards the station, etc. In many cases, the reason the cameras are tracking this object is because it was launched from the station in the first place, and now they're tracking the performance of the object. And in some cases, these objects can definitely be mobile because they have their own maneuvering thrusters, their own propulsion systems, and so on, and very frequently, these objects will test 
their propulsion systems while they are in close proximity to the International Space Station so that if anything goes wrong, theoretically, they might be retrieved. So yeah, you can have lots of things going on in close proximity to the ISS with objects being caught on camera that might, to the untrained eye, look very much like a UAP, but is actually a CubeSat or perhaps a hatch door or something that fell off accidentally during a spacewalk or some other part of the space station that got detached during a repair operation, those sorts of things. It's very difficult to go out and retrieve these objects in the case of these sorts of accidents. So as a result, the crew oftentimes just lets them float slowly away from the station until they eventually burn up in the atmosphere or in some cases crash straight through a resident's house as was the case with one poor resident who had a piece of the ISS come straight through his roof. But why does NASA or anybody else launch satellites from the International Space Station in the first place? Well, first of all, we need to talk about the types of satellites that tend to be launched from the space station. The vast majority of these satellites are called CubeSats, satellites that are roughly the size of a shoebox, or in some cases, even smaller than that. But in the age of micro miniaturization, you can get a lot of performance out of a small package. For example, there's a company called Black Sky that has an extensive constellation that orbits the Earth right now, all of which are comprised of tiny satellites that are launched by a tiny rocket, the Rocket Lab Electron. They've established an exclusive contract with Black Sky. They're actually one of their most prolific customers, and they have deployed dozens of satellites for this company, none of which is much larger than a shoebox, but they're able to carry out a detailed and extensive analysis of the entire Earth in spite of their small size. And so what a lot of companies want to do is to transport these satellites up to the International Space Station where they can be programmed, adjusted, tweaked, etc. before they get deployed into orbit. Whereas if you send these satellites up on a rocket, they can sometimes be shaken out of adjustment. The launch can just be a very difficult and punishing process on a small satellite, and this could affect its function. So as a result, if you transport these things up to the space station, have them checked by astronauts and then manually launched, you can be guaranteed that your satellite is going to function as it's supposed to. And perhaps more importantly, astronauts can film these satellites in operation immediately after they get deployed in order to determine just how well they're functioning to determine whether or not there might be some piece of equipment out of alignment, some sort of damage to the satellite that would be impossible to observe if you just launch them off of a rocket. Or even if you did observe the damage, there would be nothing you could do about it. No way to retrieve the satellite. Whereas as long as the satellite has maneuvering thrusters, it could theoretically return to the space station and then be captured by the station's Canadarm. So all of that being said, it's important that any footage that we're looking at that is supposedly showing UAPs zooming around the space station be examined in the context of when the footage was actually taken. And if we don't know when this footage was actually taken, then it's very, very difficult to determine what we're really looking at. Now, in this particular case, these particular objects, I am convinced that these are CubeSats and the ISS astronaut is zooming in on these CubeSats in order to examine their performance, to get as much information as they can about them before they leave the station behind and proceed to their assigned trajectories in low Earth orbit. And the reason I think this is the case is because these things look exactly like CubeSats.
However, to be clear, just because some of these objects are mundane doesn't mean that all of them are. This one, for example, is quite interesting, not necessarily because it differs substantially from the other ones that we've been looking at, but as was pointed out in this video, all of a sudden NASA cuts the feed. And this is something that frequently happens when anomalous objects show up in ISS footage and then look, all of a sudden in the next clip, there's no object at all. Either the object vacated the area very quickly, or NASA just replaced the footage with footage from a different time that didn't include the object. Very, very interesting, and once again, I don't have an easy explanation for all of that. The objects that NASA is intentionally tracking, intentionally zooming in on, in many cases, I would suspect that that is part of a mission, part of a CubeSat deployment but the ones that are just part of your average everyday footage of a fixed ISS camera filming everyday activity on the station, well, then if something suddenly crops up in that footage, that's where I start getting a lot more interested. Perhaps an object like this, although I have to say, probably not. I think that this object, even though interestingly it kind of floats around for a bit and then and suddenly seems to accelerate or maneuver, change directions, etc. This is something that ISS astronauts like to call space dandruff. Believe it or not, a number of tiny particles, whether it be venting from the station or perhaps a little bit of waste product, something along those lines, these little bits of material can float around the station. And then if there is a sudden venting from the station, say perhaps its station keeping thrusters operate briefly, that can provide a sudden jet of gas that can push the particle away from the station with an apparent acceleration, something that can definitely look like a UAP accelerating from the station, but is actually something much smaller and much nearer and something that's a lot more mundane. However, some of the clips that Casper Sight had in his video were a lot more convincing or a lot more mysterious anyway. This, I believe, is footage having been filmed from a space shuttle mission, perhaps STS-44 or STS-48, that allegedly saw glowing objects trailing the shuttle. But again, I've never seen this footage before. And incidentally, you can go ahead ahead and check out his video if you like. I certainly don't mind you heading over there because I think it's interesting to watch all of these different clips that he's collected. But anyway, there's some audio in conjunction with this footage that allegedly concerns astronauts reporting the presence of UFOs following their spacecraft, following the space shuttle. However, they talk about the objects tumbling and they also talk about there actually only being one object and not two, which makes me wonder whether or not the audio is out of context with the footage. Again, I get very, very suspicious of some of this stuff especially when I don't recognize it, and especially when it looks really, really convincing. I'll give you another example, this flying saucer. This looks very CGI to me. Even though it's possible that the astronaut who was handling the camera was filming something maneuvering around the ISS, perhaps a CubeSat that was testing its maneuvering thrusters, I don't think it looked this much like a UFO, this much like a flying saucer. It's possible that a flying saucer image was superimposed over what was actually there. Again, it's hard to say for certain, but this looks like clever CGI work to me. 
And then there's the so-called cloaking tech. Now, this would be a lot more convincing to me if it didn't look exactly like a CubeSat post-deployment. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. Here's the object that supposedly is about to vanish via cloaking tech. And here is a block of CubeSats being deployed from the ISS. As you can see, the object is elongated, looks cylindrical, and is actually being tracked, this is what is most important, being tracked in exactly the same way as the so-called cloaking object is being tracked. In other words, just another block of CubeSats being tracked by an ISS astronaut. But then how does it vanish? Well, there's something called a vanishing object syndrome that occurs when you're tracking a fast-moving object against a rapidly changing background. In other words, say, the clouds of the planet Earth. And so, therefore, you can sometimes have a phenomena of the camera where the object appears to vanish, but the astronaut doing the filming actually wouldn't see the object disappear at all. I'm not saying that's definitely what happened in this particular circumstance, but again, given the similarity between a lot of these objects and the CubeSat deployment operations that have been filmed by ISS astronauts in the past, I would say that there's a good chance that these sorts of things are one and the same. However, as I said before, that isn't always the case. This is just a normal, everyday piece of ISS footage, and then all of a sudden, an object starts to materialize. We start to see an object slowly come into view, unmoving against the background of space. It's not a star, can't be a star, because it's daytime. The daylight washes out the night sky during this type of filming so you're not going to see a starry sky background and incidentally just because it's not moving doesn't mean that the object isn't really moving what it actually means is that this object is exactly paralleling the course of the ISS now Perhaps this is some sort of smudge on the lens, but I really don't think so. Smudges don't slowly come into view. This is something that just kind of slowly materialized and paralleled the course of the ISS for a considerable period of time until, as usual, NASA cut the footage. And then, as we can see also, it slowly faded away. Now, perhaps it could be a satellite of some kind with the sun reflecting off of its solar panels, but I really don't think so. When satellites are spotted from the ISS, they appear to be in motion because very few things are moving at precisely the same orbital speed as the ISS. You're going to get a substantial differential. So, yeah, some of this footage footage is very compelling and very interesting and I think that we should continue examining ISS footage for any evidence of UFO activity because as I said before the Pentagon reported dozens of UAPs in low earth orbit beyond the Kármán line in a 12 month time frame so obviously there's something going on in space something that cannot be easily explained and something we should demand answers about from nasa because even though i've been defending nasa quite a bit in a lot of my recent videos i am also completely convinced that they together with the rest of the government are not telling us everything thank you very much for watching please don't forget to like and subscribe and also please consider subscribing Supporting me on Patreon, like my latest Patreon supporter, Larry Walker. Thank you so much for your help, Larry, and to all my Patreon supporters. And by the way, we're having a new giveaway for the rest of this month and all of March, where one random Patreon supporter and one random Super Chat supporter will receive some brand new merchandise. Merchandise about the Apophis asteroid entitled in 2000. 2029 kiss your asteroids goodbye if this is something that you're interested in well as i said we're giving it away to one lucky patreon winner and one lucky super chat winner at the end of march and on top of that we're also going to be selling this merchandise through a brand
brand new company. These guys are awesome. They're the same folks who handle the merchandise for Ellie in Space. I'll be getting you more information about that in the coming days. So please stay tuned. Thanks again for watching. And as always, stay angry about space. The fake UAP clip was number three. Thanks for playing.